Leroy, very excited to talk to our next guest. This is uh, one of the best boxers on the planet, now one of the best boxing analysts on the planet, Andre Ward. Leroy, do you remember our first trip out to Vegas as a show? Yeah. This man's rematch against Sergey Kovalev. He whooped his ass at, at, at the Mandalay Bay, uh, put it on him. I mean, it was, it was a hell of a performance. The last, the, a real crowning jewel for his unbelievable career. Andre Ward, thank you for the time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. That was uh that was a fun event, man. We had uh we I was telling Leroy like we were we had like the uh the, the Russian mob it seemed like was walking around at all. At oh, they were sitting uh, next to us. It was it it was it was yeah. a wild experience. Uh, like it was it, I knew you like you guys were drawn back and forth. Is that a is that a fight like uh, is that a good fun last fight of your career because of how you went about and won it? And uh, not only that, like you, it, it was personal grudge between you guys, so you got to kind of just shut them up uh, to to end it all. Yeah, that, that was a good one to go out on. I mean, <clears throat> you know, anytime, you know, obviously we had, you know, it was a second fight. So the first fight was close. I felt like it could have went either way. And, you know, you have, you have this guy in, in Kovalev who's just, just, just crying for, for six months, just whining about the lights were too bright. That's why I lost. The referee was favoring him. And I mean, the, the, just crazy stuff. So, you know, as a competitor, you just have some deep in you that's saying, okay, I, I got, I got to put the, the exclamation point on this. Now uh, you got you're you're on the call this weekend. We have uh, Teofimo Lopez and Vasily Lomachenko. They are fighting for the undisputed lightweight championship. And I've been telling Leroy, I said I'm 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 hyped for this weekend because this feels like boxing. There's been fights, but this feels like boxing's almost the, the boxing is back from the pandemic. Like this is yeah. a huge huge event. Uh, these guys, uh, they, you know, we've been waiting for this fight for a long time. They've built up a hell of a matchup. You know, Teofimo's done a, a lot of great trash talking. Vasily's done a great back. The the dads are involved. It's it's got a, it's got almost everything to it. So, what do you love most about this matchup uh, coming up this weekend on ESPN? I mean, first and foremost, like you just said, they got it done. You know that that's the part that that I'm excited about. You know, as a boxing fan and analyst, and and I just want to commend both of those guys because you know, unfortunately, these types of matchups are not happening as often as they should. Um, you know, I don't want to sound like the older guy that's like you know back in my day, but just even growing up and watching the sport, you know, in the 90s and the early 2000s. Oh, I'm the same way. Even if you go back to the 80s and say, it was just a different ball game. You know, now young guys are able to get on social media and claim to be the best without actually having faced the best. And I just don't appreciate that. You know, it's one thing to feel like I will be the best one day, but you can't claim that you are the best if you haven't fought that other top dog over there. They're doing that. And that's what I'm excited about. As far as, as far as, you know, as far as in ring, you know, you have a guy in, in, in Lomachenko who is, has been proven at every level. You know, he's had almost 400 amateur fights. He had one loss in the amateurs, two-time gold medalist. Obviously that doesn't happen every day. Um, as a professional, a multi-divisional champion, but the only, you know, accolade that he hasn't accomplished is undisputed. And, and he's a few days away from, from potentially realizing that. And you have Lopez on the other hand, who, uh, just natural God-given power, explosiveness, charisma. The only thing he's missing now is a signature win, and he's days away from potentially having that. You know, Andre, back to your point about boxing, because I bring this up all the time. Yeah. It, it wasn't until Tyson started fighting, and he was kind of at the end, where you stopped getting the fights that you wanted to see, and you had to wait years and years, and by then somebody lost. What's changed that? Is it is it because everybody had, there's so many different promoters out there? And so you have that as the money is so big that everybody's, you know, fighting for it for a piece of that pie and it just gets put on the back burner. What, what would you say that's a result of? Yeah, that's kind of a loaded question. It, it, there's a lot of reasons. Um, one reason would be probably, you know, the era of Floyd Mayweather. You know, when I look at Floyd's career, I look at Floyd's career in two, in two decades. You know, yeah, he was he was pretty boy Floyd the first decade, and then he, you know, became Money Mayweather. And I think the young fighters coming up, they only look at the Money Mayweather stage <laughs> where he was in position, he commanded, you know, the gate and the pay-per-view dollars, and he could call his shots. But they, don't, they forget about the first 10 years when he had to face everybody, and he's screaming at, you know, for people to notice him and that, that he's the greatest and he's going to be the greatest and just give me my opportunity and, and just grinding for low money, you know, without without really getting all the all, everything that comes with it, they they only see that that the ending in that last ten years, and they and they just want to leap straight to being Money Mayweather, 
and sitting back and saying, well, I'm the man and I'm going to call my shot. And they failed to realize that Floyd had a, a whole 10 years, you know, before Money Mayweather, you know, ever came on the scene. That's probably everybody that he's fought early in his career, too. They all felt that they had to work their way up. And now it just seems like you fight. We've seen cards down here where guys are undefeated and they fight nobody. And then the next thing you know, they on ESPN. Yeah. And they talk about, I'm ready to get my big money. Right. <laughs> Without paying the dues. Right, right. There's a place for that, though. You know, there's a place for taking what you call tune-up fights, a guy that, you know, you're supposed to beat, but he keeps you sharp. You know, if you're not on point, maybe he could have a good night. There's a place for that. You can't – your body can't take fighting another top guy, fight in and fight out. That's just not a reality, and that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying about every two or three fights, you need to be trying to face a top contender or face right. another champion if you're going to be, you know, on your soapbox, on social media, saying that you're the best. Well, this this is a fascinating thing, too, because Teofimo's only 23 years old. He's got 15 fights, and he's getting a fight like this. And I, I don't feel – I feel like sometimes it almost takes uh, too long where a guy can get that breakout fight. So what do you think about the timing of this for his career, taking on a guy like Lomachenko who's – you know, he's – age-wise has a, an interesting career because he had so many amateur fights. But uh, Teofimo getting the chance to be an undisputed champion at his age with not that many pro fights under his belt. I think it's interesting. And I, and I say interesting because if you look at the history of the sport, you know, these, these watershed moments, these turning point moments for a young fighter, typically they either turn out really, really good and we see the birth of a new star or they turn out really, really bad. Um, obviously this is not a, a team sport, so it's all on tail. It's all on MoMA. And you know, I can go down a list of, of, of fights where young guys thought they were ready and then they realized throughout the course of their fight that I'm not ready. And, and sometimes they're fractured physically, but oftentimes it's psychologically, you know, who they thought they were, everything, that, all, the, all, all the, the moxie and everything that they brought into their ring that night, it got shattered in one night and it's hard to pick up those pieces. But then you have times when, you know, you have a Floyd Mayweather facing a Gennaro Hernandez when Floyd was, had only been in the game two years. He had a handful of fights. Gennaro was like 42 and one. And, and everybody's like, man, this dude is tripping. He is not ready for Gennaro Hernandez. And, and we saw a, a star born that night. And you realize that it's something special about this guy, Floyd Mayweather. And that could be the case for Lopez. Do you think that this, uh, this division has a chance to be special? Because it feels like there's a lot of young talent in it all over the place they do like you said there's and they're all seemingly very good at social media with having them all be very young so there is a lot of trash talking you know like ryan garcia javante De, uh javante davis uh devin haney like all these guys seemingly like they could be in a collision course for each other and that'd be fun to have that kind of a a rivalry amongst all of them this new age that we're in but um like you said they there can be a lot of hurdles in boxing too like but but i feel like the potential as a fan could be monstrous the, you know, the, the, the 130 pound weight class and the lightweight weight class, you know, where, where, where Lopez and Loma are that I think it is special. Um, you have Devin Haney, who is, you know, he, he's, he's, he, I don't think he's, you know, tipped the iceberg of what he's going to be. Um, I, I think you see the potential, but he hasn't realized that yet. Um, I don't have a problem with these guys talking on social media. All I'm saying is at some point we got to back that talk up and there are hurdles in boxing. You do have different sides. You know, you had HBO for years, and then you still got Showtime. You got PBC, and you got ESPN. But in my experience, just watching the, the, the sport, you know, being in it, obviously, but as a fan, just sitting back and seeing how matchups are made, if two fighters really want to fight, they're going to get the fight done. I like that. Now, speaking of that, uh, we, you know, the heavyweight division, it's, it, it's had a rebirth over the last couple of years. Uh, there was news this week that looks like Tyson Fury is moving on from the trilogy from Deontay Wilder. Um, as, as uh, you know, you guys being partnered with, uh, with Tyson Fury doing his fights, you know, now over here in America, what do you, uh, what do you make of this? That, that he, uh, you know, they've tried to make the date a couple of times. It looks like it's been put off. Um, how do you think this drama show ends? Do you think that it ends with, uh, with Deontay and Tyson ended up fighting each other? Or do you think that he really is going to move on to something else? And, uh, you know, maybe it ends with him to, uh, taking Joshua on next year. You know, in terms of the business side and all the particulars, I, ha I have limited information. You know, I do know that there was a deadline for the fight to be made uh, in December, and, and that's come and gone. I mean, you know, we're not in December yet, but I, just with the particulars and, and, and college football, it's not going to happen in December. So 
you know, it's my it's my guess that that's what that that's what Tyson Fury is referring to is that hey, this deadline is not going to be met. Uh, I, I don't think anybody is, is is held liable for that. I just think that he's saying that okay, if you're not going to fight me, I'm going to move on because I want to stay busy. I've been in the gym and I've been staying in shape. And again, maybe I'm speaking out of turn a little bit here, but you know, this is not going to be easy for Deontay Wilder to rebound from. Um, he's been very quiet. Uh, you know, prior, you know, prior to the fight, you know, the second fight with Tyson Fury, very loud, very boisterous and very out front, you know, a loss can humble you, especially that kind of loss. You know, we just so talked about You think he got humbled? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. And, and, and I've heard excuses about Glove Gate and, and his, man, I'm, I'm, listen, if, if there's something substantial brought to the table about that and there's some proof, then, then, then Tyson Fury needs to be held accountable. But I, I haven't seen that. I've seen a lot of stuff on social media, but nothing beyond that. But my point is for Deontay Wilder is it's not going to be easy. And I said this right after the fight and I got some heat for it on sports. And I said, man, it, it, I don't know if he's going to come back from this. And I don't think they're going to do another fight. People said, man, you're crazy. You're questioning his heart. I said, I'm, I'm not questioning his heart. I'm just saying I've seen this movie before. When you have a puncher who is feared like that, and then all of a sudden abruptly that's crushed. Again, it's hard to pick up those pieces. So I hope they fight. I just don't think it's likely. You think he needs to fight somebody else first to kind of get his confidence going and, and let him realize that he could still be the boxer that he is? He just has to be better? In a situation like that, when you get bucked off a horse, it's one or two things that, that's going to happen. Either you're going to jump right back on that horse and, and conquer that fear and face it so you can keep riding, right. or you're going to leave horses alone altogether. So it, it depends on him. What does he feel like? Does he believe he can beat Tyson Fury? Does he believe that that was a fluke? Does he believe that, you know, the, the armor that he wore to the ring weighed him down? Does he believe that Tyson Fury had something in his glove? What does he really believe? If he believes he can beat Tyson Fury, I think he should go for it immediately. If not, then leave it alone. Hey, but think about this. He, he got two fights to think of yep. as to can I beat this guy? But I think you just build your confidence up. Go fight somebody, get your confidence up, and then get ready. Because you can't, he can't be idle while Tyson has a fight. Yes. He can't be idle. Yes. Because when he come back, he's going to have more questions. Yes. You get it on the head. The longer he waits, the harder it's going to be to get back on that horse and say Especially that. Especially with all the people in his ear. Because people are telling you what you can and can't do. And they wasn't in that ring. They didn't take. They, they weren't taking those punches. <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, you, guys can, you guys can catch Andre Ward. He's gonna be. They got. A, he's gonna be on the broadcast. Teofimo Lopez versus Vasilo Machenko. Now they got the undercard starting seven thirty p.m. ESPN on Saturday. The main card is at ten p.m. At the main, if you guys want to watch the weigh-in, that is gonna be tonight, five p.m. on ESPN two. Is there anything that you uh, you glam out of the way in Andre? How important are these days as a fighter? As an analyst, is it, do we do we overanalyze these weigh-ins, these stare downs a little bit too much? No, I, I think they're meaningful. I mean, they're not everything. It's not the whole puzzle, but it's certainly a piece of the puzzle. You know, you get to you get to size your opponent off with his shirt off, so you get to see, okay, what kind of shape are you in? What your abs looking like? You know, you get to look in his eye because you know the closer the fight gets, the closer you get to the battle, the more opportunities you're going to have to doubt yourself. So now we're a day away. Let me see if I see your armpit sweat. You can see sweat sometimes running down a guy's <laughs> arm. Let me see how nervous you are. And then you also got to check yourself. How am I feeling? Am I ready? You know, sometimes you can look down during a face-off like that and, and see a guy's leg shake. You know, so it gives you a feel. It gives you a, just a little bit. It's a piece of the puzzle. It's not everything, but it's definitely something you want to keep your eyes on. We can't wait for this one, man. And by the way, I just want to say uh, as, as a note, like, you, Tim, and Joe Tess, like, that is my bar on my favorite. Yep. You, the way you guys have it, you, first of all, you and Tim, like, the dynamic between you guys. He says the crazy things. You almost kind of roping them in sometimes. Like, <laughs> it really has been a fun dynamic seeing how you guys have blossomed together. So, I, you. like, did you guys have that naturally, or did you feel like it, uh, you know, it, it helped? Because I feel like well, right away it just felt like it, flew, it, it was a good mix when you guys uh, were put together. I think those th those things just kind of happen. You know, you can't predict them. You know, I worked with Joe Tess in the past, and obviously, you know, he's a legend in the game. Uh, me, me, and, me and Tim, we came up as fighters together. We actually fought when we were kids. Um, and we go back and forth about that. So I've known Tim, and, and, and but Tim never struck me as the guy that I see on, on television now. Tim is always kind of like, you know, mean-faced. I'm locked in. I'm Desert Storm. I'm coming to get it. I didn't know Tim had all this personality. I said, Tim, if you had – if you showed – uh, uh, just a fraction of this personality 
when you were fighting, dude, you would have been a multi, you would have been a, you would have been, been a billionaire. You'd made way more money because yeah. you got this killer in the ring, but then you got this guy outside the ring. But I just think he's evolved. Um, I, I love the fact that he speaks his mind, and and it's not easy, as y'all know. You know, when you when you're on the airways at any level, it's tough to speak your mind because you might get backlash. Tim's not worried about the backlash, and I love that about him. Man, my only fear is because I've been there that you have to be careful with how critical you are because a lot of times the guys you're talking about are better than you at what they're doing. Hmm. And so you're like, well, I, I got I to call him out, but I'm going to tread lightly because I'm not going to call him like I'm the, the best that ever did it. And, and those are, you know, they're your peers, you know, it's, it's right. a community that you've been a part of. So they're looking at you like, oh, you switched, you switched <laughs> up. Now you, now you're the media. Yeah. So it's tough. It's not easy. Yep. Oh, swear. This is the last one because I need an, I need a professional athlete arbiter on this. Oh, a, a Charlie horse, Andre Ward. What in your mind, what is a Charlie horse? Is that is a, a, a no, 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 no. Sorry. Okay. This is a Charlie horse. What is it? Yeah. I mean, I played a little football, so I've gotten a couple of them. So a Charlie horse is, is we're talking about like, you know, like yeah. a print, right? In the leg. Yeah. I mean, it, to it, me, it's the muscle season up and, and tightening up. And, and basically, you're not being able to move. Now, now here is but where, the question. Where, but where? Does it have to be in the leg? I've only heard of it being in the leg. That's right, because you're a normal person. Leroy. Lower extremities. Leroy was explaining it's Leroy is explaining to me he was going for a first down and he swore he got a Charlie horse reaching out for a first down in his in my arm. In the arm? And I've yeah. never heard of I've never heard of a Charlie horse but, in an arm. It sounds like the most ridiculous thing. But but everybody we've talked, we've had doctors call in, right? They said no, it's basically a, a another name for a type of spasm or whatever, but you can have them anywhere. And somebody sent me a tweet and say horses don't have arms. <laughs> like <laughs> it's gotten out of control. Oh my God. But I can see that though. I mean, you know, if, I guess if you can have a muscle spasm in your lower extremity, I guess you can have one in your upper body. I've just never experienced it or heard of it until now. Oh, you ain't it. I'm just going to say. Nope. No more. Oh, I'm just going to be Wait. wait. Nope. Why did you have to throw? It's the cherry that got me. It's the last yeah, one. You could have left it alone. <laughs> Check I'm it sorry, out. Man. Check out, sorry, sorry. check out Teofimo Lopez versus Vasily Lomachenko tomorrow night on ESPN. 7.30 is when the undercard starts. Main card starts at 10. And, of course, if you guys want to watch the weigh-ins, that'll be tonight, 5 p.m. on ESPN2 Eastern. Thank you, Andre Ward. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Anytime. Andre. Thank you, fellas. Hey, you were the worst. What? Don't get what? mad at me. Right? It's the last part. We were good. Yep. We were good. Yep. Every, then he said, but I've never right. heard of it. That's right. No. That's right. Now I got to no. get on my side. Not just you no. and Connor. I wouldn't say I will fight him, but no, I won't. No, you won't. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs>